In the 1950s, many Americans rushed to the suburbs, taking advantage of new veterans' benefits and opportunities for home ownership. Inner cities around the nation began to suffer. In response to these conditions, federal and state governments implemented policies for redevelopment and revitalization. The Baltimore Civic Center was part of this larger effort. City politicians believed it would bring residents and visitors back into Baltimore. But where would it be located? The Inner Harbor? An open space such as Clifton Park? Would it replace the drive-in movie theater at Carlin's Park? After a controversial proposal to build the center in Druid Hill Park, city leaders agreed on a west side location in 1959. Unfortunately, like many urban renewal projects, the construction of the Civic Center required quite a bit of destruction. For half a century, the chosen site had been a place defined by a community of workers and merchants. By the end of 1959, the city had purchased properties from over 48 businesses and organizations that occupied the site. Tenants had to evacuate by January. Some were reluctant to leave. The chairman of the Civic Center Commission declared that even if tenants were so selfish as not to see the civic benefit of this project, the city would still move forward with the arena. Demolition began in 1960. Completed in 1962, the Civic Center did transform the West Side. It became a venue for sports and culture. At the same time, the destruction of businesses and streets altered routes of travel and ruptured connections that had defined the West Side's place in Baltimore's history.